Hello everyone, this is Dr. Susan Zwaya, PhD in Molecular Oncology. Uh, welcome in this uh, training program, which is about the RNA pull-down procedure to identify RNA targets of a long non-coding RNA. So first I will give an outline for what I will, I will cover in the first day of the training program. So I will start with a very brief introduction about the RNA uh, pull down assay and I will talk about the advantage, advantages and the history of the RNA pull down assay. Then I will go through the methodology step number one uh, which, uh, which will be uh, about the uh, cell culture uh, and then the cross-linking for the culture cell cross-linking and the tissue cross-linking. And then we will talk about the tissue lysis. The rest of the steps we'll, we'll discuss or talk about it in the, the other days. So before we talk about how, how we can identify the RNA targets of a long non-coding RNA, we need first to know what is the RNA pull-down assay. So basically the RNA pull-down assay is an assay that allows identifying the RNA targets of a long non-coding RNA based on the hybridization of homemade design antisense DNA oligonucleotide probes specific to this long non-coding RNA in an appropriately fixed tissue or cell line. It efficiently allows the capture of all RNA targets of the long non-coding RNA of interest. So the main advantages of this uh, essay is it's usable for most applications and it has been optimized first for several long non-coding RNAs. Second, we can use it for both culture cells and tissue extracts. This method can help to disappear the biological function of a long non-coding RNA by providing new significant knowledge on RNA regulation by long non-coding RNA. So, a brief uh, information about the history of the RNA pull-down assay. So basically, the RNA pull-down assay is based on the mix of two previous methods. The first one called the CHIRP, uh, which stands for the chromatin isolation by RNA purification. And the second one is the CHART, which is the capture uh, hybridization analysis of RNA targets. The specific specificity of the RNA pull-down assay is that the oligonucleotide probes were designed using informatics modeling of a secondary structure of a long non-coding RNA and its, its goal was to identify the RNA targets. So this is like showing the first assay that the first technique that our assay RNA pull down assay is based on, which is the chromatin isolation by RNA purification. This is illustration showing the most important step for this uh, techniques. So first we have the chromatin is a cross link to long encoding RNA protein adapt in vivo. Then uh, after we do the cross linking which followed by sonication for the lysate, we have the biotinylated uh, telling probe are hybridized to target uh, long and uh, encoding RNA. So we have this, okay? After that, uh, the chromatin complex, we uh, purify it using magnetic uh, cetriptavidine beads, as shown in here, beads, uh, followed by uh, stringent washes. After that, we follow we do washing steps. Then we have the uh, long encoding RNA bound to the DNA or protein. We can elute it with the cocktail of RNAs A and H. A putative long encoding RNA binding sequence is uh, schematized in orange, as is shown in here, it's in orange. Okay. So the second uh, techniques that uh, RNA pull down assay is based on the ca is, uh, is the capture hybridization analysis of the RNA targets, and this illustration is showing the uh, simply the basic steps of uh, this techniques as well the chirp and the wrap uh, techniques. Uh, 
So basically the first step in, hybridize, in hybridization capture method, the cells expressing an RNA of interest are cross-linked to stabilize the interaction within the RNA complex. So always the first step, even in the, as we uh, seen in the, in the chirp assay, is the cross-linking. Even the RNA pull down assay, will, the first step will be the, uh, the cross-linking. So basically, the importance of the cross-linking is, is to stabilize the interaction with the RNA complexes. After the cross-linking, uh, the content of the nuclei is solubilized by shearing. In order to uh, so, uh, solubilize the content of the nuclei, we have to do shearing. And the RNA is hybridized to biotinylated antisense oligonucleotides. After shearing, it's, uh, we have the RNA should be hybridized to the uh, biotinylated antisense oligonucleotides. Here we have uh, just a reminder that the chart assay uses a handful of short capture oligonucleotides. Okay, in this assay we use short oligonucleotide, while uh, the previous uh, method, which is the CHIRP, and the other uh, method, GRAP, is not mentioned in, or not covered in our uh, training program for today uh, uses a pool of oligonucleotide that tile to full length of the RNA. Just showing the difference. The RNA complex are then enriched on the magnetic center of the VDM beads. Okay, as we see, the, these are the beads. Uh, after that, we can wash them under stringent condition and elute it. Uh, after elution, we have DNA, protein, and RNA. The uh, isolated DNA and RNA can be uh, analyzed using qPCR or high throu throughput sequencing, while the uh, recovered protein can be identified with mass spectrometry. Uh, next, we will talk about the methodology. Uh, the first step of the methodology uh, in order to uh, prepare our cells so we need to talk about the culturing the cells uh, briefly and then we will talk about the tissue cross-linking and then the lysis and sonication so today I will be talking about the uh, uh, culture cells tissue cross-linking lysis for sonication we will be postponing this is uh, the talk about this step uh, for day number two so first step in the methodology is we culture, we culture the cells. Uh, so the cells uh, uh, we, we are using in this uh, uh, training program is the GH4C1 cells, uh, which are the somatolactotroph pituitary cells. Uh, those cells are cultured in HAMS F10 medium, supplemented with 15% horse serum and 2% fetal calf serum. So we uh, grow those cells until they reach 90% confluence and after uh, they reach the confluency uh, we take those uh, cells, uh, those plates from the incubator okay and we tr the first thing uh, we try to remove the medium from the cell culture the condition for growing these those cells is 5% uh, CO2 and 37 uh, series after removing the medium from the cell culture plate, we use uh, one volume of PBS to rinse the cells. We have to wash the cells from uh, the residue of the medium. So we wash them two times. Each wash is five minutes. As we can see, we have here two. It's full with PBS. We uh, use pipette to wash, uh, to, uh, to apply the PBS and wash the cells. Next, we add 10 milliliter of 1% uh, PFA, paraformaldehyde, uh, that you prepared in the PBS to fix the cells. Okay, so we need to fix the cells. Here we have a note that this solution must be freshly prepared from a 4% paraformaldehyde stock solution. So we have a stock solution, the, the, the percentage or the concentrations of 4%. Okay, this is already prepared and safe. Okay, so we need to prepare this, the 1% freshly from it. And then we have uh, other notes. Uh, so we have to be uh, careful because the paraformaldehyde is toxic and must be handled with caution. Okay. Okay. 
So after adding 10 mol of 1% uh, paraformaldehyde that, uh, in the prepared PBS to fix the cells, to fix the cells, then the uh, the cross-link cross-link the cells under uh, agitation at room temperature for uh, 10 minutes. So we put in the place that have uh, that have the cells that cover with 1% paraformaldehyde on the shaker. Okay, at room temperature for 10 minutes. After that, uh, we need to quench the paraformaldehyde action because it's harmful for the cells. So we can do that by adding uh, 1 mL of 1.25 uh, molar uh, glycerin, as is shown in the picture. After that, we uh, re-agitate the sample at room temperature for 5 minutes. Next step is we aspirate the medium to discard the solution, okay, as is shown in the picture. After uh, removing uh, as much as uh, uh, as much supernated as possible, we rinse the plates uh, two times with the uh, for, uh, for five minutes each using uh, 0.5 mol of PBS, okay. Always the washing with PBS. Next, we add a volume of PBS corresponding to uh, one, uh, one to tenth of the volume of the media. We collect the cells with the cell scraper, as is shown in here, and then transfer uh, the, uh, the, the pellet to a centrifuge too. So we show in the previous uh, slides how we uh, cross-link the culture cells, and now we show uh, in this slide how we uh, uh, cross-link the tissue in these four steps. So first step, we put uh, 5 mg of freshly obtained mouse pituitary gland tissue in a solution of 1% paraformaldehyde diluted in a PBS, approximately 10x the volume of the tissue. Agitate for 10 minutes at room temperature. So it's basically similar to the first step for the culture cell cross-linking. Number two, when we quench the uh, paraformaldehyde action by adding 1.25 molar glycerin solution, uh, we need to know that we can add one mole, okay, uh, of glycerin solution per 10 mole of the paraformaldehyde solution, and then agitate five minutes at room temperature. Step number three, discard the media by aspiration and rinse two times rinse two time with the PBS, approximately 10x the volume of the tissue. Okay? Uh, remove as much supernated as possible. Number four, we can store the cross-link tissue in, uh, at minus 80. So we can stop at this step, okay, if we, like, uh, if we want to... Uh, not to proceed with the next steps, okay? Because we the next step will be the uh, cell or tissue lysis, and then the sonication, and then we do the RA pull down assay. If we want to stop, we can stop at this step, okay? Uh, for today, we will proceed with the cell or tissue lysis, and we'll stop until the, so we reach the sonication. So uh, the, for the cell or tissue lysis, we have few notes we have to consider and keep it in mind when we do the lysis. So we have to prepare the lysis buffer which usually is composed of the uh, 50 millimolar trace HCL, uh, the pH 47, 10 millimolar EDTA, 1% uh, SDS supplemented with the 200 units per mole of RNAs inhibitor solution and a cocktail of uh, protease inhibitor 5 microliter per mole. To obtain the lysed sample without a prior thawing, we resuspend the cell fillets or cross-linked tissue with this buffer, approximately one mole per hundred milligram of cell fillet or tissue. We add one mole for each hundred milligram of the cell fillet or the tissue. A cell fillet obtained uh, usually uh, from uh, 10 million cells give rise to a lysed sample containing roughly uh, 20 milligram of protein. So each 10 million give about uh, 20 milligram of protein. We have to know that depending on the tissue used, a step of mechanical disruption, 
okay, if we, are, if we are using tissue not cells, we need sometimes a mechanical disruption, okay? In this case, it's important to avoid the heating. When we do mechanical disruption, heat can be generated. So we need to uh, avoid the heat, okay? It's important to avoid the heat of the heating of the samples during this additional step. So we have to work in a cold room. After we apply the lysis buffer, we collect after like 20 minutes, okay, uh, we collect the cell pellet or the tissue, or place, place the lysed sample in the 4 degree Celsius water bath, okay. We, we have to work in this step in the 4 degree. And after we collect the, the pellet, we spin it down at uh, 510 G at 4 uh, Celius, okay, for five minutes, and the condition is shown in here. After uh, the centrifugation is finished, uh, we can remove the supernated uh, and keep the pellets. So after we uh, get the pellet, we can store the pellet in minus 80, uh, and we can uh, stop uh, at this step. Uh, and proceed the work next day or next week, okay? So the pellet is safe in minus 80 for about three months, okay? Uh, uh, by reaching this step, we, we, we reach the end of uh, the first day of our training program. Uh, see you on the second day. Thank you.